All right, welcome back everybody to part six, the final part of the first phase of this Unity 2D platformer tutorial series. I hope that you've been following along well and have been enjoying yourself. In the last video, we created a game over screen and a victory screen. They're currently deactivated in our scene, so let's go ahead and activate one of them and press play. And when you click the buttons, you notice nothing happens. That's because there are no functions set to those buttons as of yet. We're going to write those functions in a game manager script. So let's go back. Let's go all the way down to scripts, right click, create new C sharp script. And let's call this one game manager, capital G, capital M. There you go. And once it's compiled, you should see that your game manager script will have a cog icon. We also need to create a game manager object within our scene. So create empty, reset its position, and we'll name this exactly the same as our script, game manager. All right, I like to place the game manager at the top there above camera, as it is overseeing all our processes within our scene. And let's attach, before we continue, our game manager script to our game manager game object. Excellent, all right, let's double click and get right into it. So what do we want our game manager to do exactly? Well, we're gonna to wanna to write functions that will come into effect when we click the replay button, when we reach game over, and when we reach victory as well. And let's think about when we reset the game here, we're gonna to wanna to reset our player start position. So he restarts at the bottom left corner of the screen where our player is in the scene every time we replay the game. So first of all, we're gonna to have to make a reference to our player controller script. So let's go public, player controller, that's the name of the player controller script we wrote, and you can call that one the player. There we go. And as I said before, we're gonna to wanna to reference that position as a start position as well. So underneath, we'll write a private vector to, and just simply call it player start. There we go. And as we reach victory, we're gonna want our victory screen to pop up. So let's make a reference to that game object, capital G, capital O, public game object, and we'll call it victory screen. There we are. And when we hit game over, of course, we're gonna to wanna to bring up our game over screen. So write the same again, public game object, game over screen. There we go. That is all the variables we're gonna to wanna to need for now. So as I say, the start position of a player, we need to reference when our scene, our game starts up. And of course, we do that here in the void start function. And to make this reference, well, let's say what the start position is going to be. Player start equal the player dot transform its position in world space dot position there we go so on the first frame it's going to make a reference to where our player and it could be anywhere you put the player it'll always make a reference to that point good that's out of the way we can delete void update because we don't need to use that here we're going to create our own functions so let's go ahead and write public void and we'll call this one victory there we go and we can write two more, public void, and you can call this one game over, there we are, and one more, and that is to replay, to reset the scene, public void, and we can just simply call this reset. Okay, let's go to our victory function here. When we've reached the flag, we have achieved our goal, what do we want to happen? Well, we want our victory screen to pop up. So let's write a line for that by saying victory screen dot set active and in the brackets here, true. It means we're switching it on. We're making it appear in our scene. Also, let's have our player disappear as well. And we can do that by saying the player. Now, because we're referencing the player controller here, we want to call upon the player game object that the player controller script is attached to. 
So we're going to say the player dot game object with a lowercase g dot set active and in the brackets here false. So we're going to turn our player off for a little bit. There we go. That's our victory sorted. Game over. Very similar. Our player has hit some spikes. Boom. Our player will disappear. But we also want our game over screen to appear. So let's do the same again. Game over screen dot set active. True. There we are. And the player dot game object dot set active. False. There we go. So let's say now we've achieved victory or we've hit a game over, unfortunately, and we want to replay our game. This is where we're going to write this now. What do we want to happen? Well, we want our game over screen or victory screen, depending on which condition we've met, to disappear. So let's say victory screen dot set active false. Or if we hit game over, game over screen dot set active false. There we go. And what else do we want to say? Well, we're going to want to reset our player. So we're going to say the player dot game object dot set active. Well, we want to bring him back. So we'll say it's true. Put our player back into the scene, set him active again, ready for another round. And where are we going to drop him? We're going to drop him at our player start position. So to do that, we simply say the player dot transform dot position is equal to well where we started, where we initially were. Player start. There we go. All right, that should do for now for our game controller. It's going to be very basic, and you can expand on this as the project develops. But our functions here won't really matter unless we have code for our buttons. We're going to create a menu script as well. So let's go back, let it compile, and let's write a new script, and we'll call it menus. All right, open up menus. And here we're going to write the functions that are going to tell our buttons what to do when we press them. So like before, we don't need void update, nor do we need void start. So let's get rid of those. So we have two buttons, restart and quit game. So let's write functions for those. Public, void, and we'll call this one replay. There we are. And underneath we'll say public void quit game there we are okay now in our replay function we can make a reference to the game manager script we wrote because we want to call upon this function here void reset to do that we simply say we want to find object of type open up point in brackets well what object are we looking for well, we're looking for a script. We're looking for a game object with that script. So we'll say game manager. There we are. Close the open brackets there. And what do we want to say specifically we want to find within the game manager script? Well, we want to find that reset function. So at the end there, say dot reset. End of open curly brackets. And there we go. So when we press the replay button now, it's going to go and make a reference to our game manager and it will call upon the reset function. And for our quick game, nice and easy, just type in application dot quit. There we go, how easy was that? So this will just quit the game and take you to desktop. Nice and simple. All right, let's save that now. Go back into Unity. Once the code has finished compiling, let's drag and drop our script onto our screens so victory screen and we'll drop one onto game over screen as well so for the victory screen we see our script is there but we want to reference this also on our buttons here so where it says on click this is where action will happen when we click the button click plus and in here we're going to put the reference to the object that has the script 
we want to use, which is our victory screen. Put that in there. And when you go to function, currently it's got no function. And we know where the functions are. They're in our menus, script, and we have it here, replay and quick game. So it's our replay button. There we are. Do the same for quit. Drag victory screen into there. And what do we want to say happens? Well, menus, quick game. Done. We can set this, deactivate it now. We don't need to see that. And let's set active our game over screen and do the same again. So where are our buttons here? There we go. Replay, same again. Game over screen. And menus, replay, quit. Exactly the same. Game over, menus, and quit. There we are. Okay, let's close that down. Let's say goodbye to the game over screen. We don't want to see that now, right now. What about our other two functions? What about victory and game over? We want them to happen, of course, when we breach the triggers on our spikes and flag. So let's go ahead into our player controller script. Go to our on trigger enter 2D function down here. So we said that when we hit the spike, ouch, debug.log, well, we are now simply gonna reference the game manager and the game over function. So let's go to the top. At the bottom here, let's write public game manager, we'll call it the GM. There we are. We scroll down now. And we simply say, we can leave the debug.log there, that's okay. And we say the GM dot, well, what do we want to call? Game over. End with open, close, curly brackets. There we are. So when we hit the spikes now, the game over function from our game manager script will come into effect. Save that. And let's do the same for goal pole. So first things first, let's delete these. We don't need these now. Let's make a reference to the game manager. Public game manager. And once again, just call it the GM. Leave the debug.log. It's nice to see a little message. And we want to say the GM dot victory. There we are. So that'll bring up the victory function reference from our game manager when we hit the flag. Go ahead and save back into Unity. And once we're back, let's go from the top through all our game objects, making sure that we have placed the necessary references to them. So here we have the player, let's drag our player object. There we are, to the player slot, victory screen and game over screen. Let's grab those, game over to the game over, victory to the victory, that's good. We don't have one on the camera, the player does. He has a reference calling for a game manager Let's drag our game manager, pop it down there. Our level does have one. We have our goal. Goal pole. There we are. Reference to the game manager, of course. Bring that down there. And that should be us good. And we can drag the event system just at the bottom there to keep it all nice and tidy. So when we press play now, and we should start to see things happen. So let's go to the top to our spikes. And when we impale ourselves, there we are, game over. We can click replay and it brings us to our player start position that we assigned in the start function of our game manager. And let's go to our flag over here and ta-da, you win. Hit replay and there we go. Excellent. You can have some fun now altering things like gravity, jump force and move speed to your heart's content to get a good game feel so let's go back let's click on our player and let's adjust a few things shall we so i'm going to make the gravity a lot stronger because he is very floaty i'm going to put a gravity scale of five i will also give him a stronger jump force as well let's give a jump force of 10 and while we're at it let's clean up and tidy his collider too so let's click zoom in to our player because you can see we've got a lot of space here so our collision is not going to be that accurate and let's just bring it close to his hands so it's nice and trim there we are okay that will do and if we press play once again 
our little character should have a much better jump. Yeah, that feels much cleaner, a lot sharper, and a bit more control. Avoid the spikes to the flag. Hey, there we go. We win. Excellent. All right. That is the final video of this first phase of tutorials. I hope you've enjoyed following along at home or wherever you are. And if you found any of the information at all helpful in any of these videos, please consider subscribing below to help support the channel. And I will be preparing more tutorials for phase two in the near future. In the meantime, I want you to practice what we've learned in creating at least four other scenes. So you'll have a total of at least five levels. To do that, you can just keep the scene open as we have it, I'll show you now. Go to your level and you can rearrange your platforms, your spikes, even get creative with creating new game objects as well. And then you simply save as, and you can save your scene as level two, level three, four, five, however many levels you want. All right, and once you've done that, you'll be ready to go for the first video of phase two, which will happen soon, so keep an eye out in the future. Thank you very much, guys, for all your support. I've really enjoyed preparing these for you, and I will see you in the future. Good luck, and have fun creating levels. Take care.